Good morning, morning Heathlands, and welcome to week 26 of Heathlands at Home Extended Broadcast. This week so far we've had... On Bank Holiday Monday. Resistance Band, Workout with Maria and Art Live with Helen T. On Tuesday we had... Does it to Heal with Wendy at 10.30am. Signing with Nick was also on yesterday morning. Heathlands Quiz of the Week and we won! So well done to us! Coming up today from Heathens at Home. On Facebook at 11 after us is Workout with Maria. Maria is planning to do this session live today, so good luck, Maria. Live lunch from 12 until quarter to one. Theme bingo with Spiff at 1 p.m., but this week we don't have Spiff. But don't worry, Jackie and Helen are on the case. Today's theme bingo is Bird Bingo. <laughs> The bingo sheets were emailed out this morning, so hopefully you will have them ready to use. If you haven't received one, please email us at heathensathome at lbtook.org and we will email you one out to ASAP. Coming up right now we have... A guest presenter with an activity to show you. Today we have one of the Helens again, but which one will it be this time? Hmm. Hmm. Hi Heathens, today I'm going to show you how to make a really pretty felt rose brooch. So it's a nice simple jewellery piece to make. It's made from felt as you'd expect and a safety pin catch to hold it onto your clothes and it won't take you too long to make, you just need to be a little bit careful while you're doing the cutting and sewing and it would make a lovely present for someone or you could make one for yourself and it's a nice addition to your spring wardrobe. So let's have a look at what we need to make one of these. To make our felt rose brooch, we're gonna need a few bits and pieces. So you're gonna need some felt, something circular to draw around. I'm using a roll of tape here, something to draw around with. So I've got a colored pencil here, nice and chalky one. You're gonna need a needle and thread, a pair of scissors for cutting your felt out, and a safety pin or a brooch back so that you can make your rose into a brooch. So once you've got everything gathered together, we're ready to get making. So to make our brooch, the first thing we need to do is to cut out a circle of felt. And I'm gonna use my roll of tape as a template. And what I'm gonna do is just draw round onto the felt so that I get a nice circular shape. There we go, and I've just got a single layer of felt here. We only need one layer. So I've got my circle there, and I'm gonna draw a spiral in the middle. So I'm gonna start at one point here, and I'm gonna work inwards into a spiral. You can do this bit after you've cut it out, but as you can see, I'm doing it now. So I've got my circle of felt with a spiral in the middle and I'm going to cut out the circle and along the line that I've made for the spiral. So nice and steady, cutting out my circle shape. And don't worry about the coloured pencil marks, those will brush off as you're working. They just need to stay there long enough for you to cut out. So I'm going to carry on cutting round in a spiral, like so. Making sure to leave a little round bit in the centre of my spiral. This is a bit like when we did the spiral snakes. Okay, so having got our pieces cut out, it's a good idea to get your needle and thread ready. So I've got my needle there with a length of thread. And I'm going to pop a little knot in the end. There we go, and that will just make life a bit easier once I start sewing. But before we start sewing, we need to make our rose. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to start from the outside of the spiral okay so we're not starting in the middle we're starting on the outside and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold a little bit of the first bit over and then I'm going to just nice and carefully roll the spiral round and round so I'm going from the outside of the spiral that we cut towards the middle and if it's getting out of shape just pause and realign things there we go and you want to do this reasonably tightly but not too tightly because it's the rolling that gives us the petals for the roses so we'll keep rolling until we get to the outside of the spiral and then if you remember we left that round bit at the middle we're going to use that as the base of the rose but up until that point we've got everything rolled to make the rose shape now obviously when we're wearing it we don't want that spiral to come undone so what we're going to do is using our needle and thread is we're just going to put a few stitches through all of the layers of felt so what I'm doing is I'm going right the way through from one side of the spiral to the other so that I'm catching all of those layers in so that it's nice and secure. There we go. So now it won't come undone. I've got a nice rose. Now you'll notice I didn't say the last bit. That's going to cover those stitches that I've just done. And I'm going to use the base, that round bit that we left, to give me a nice flat area to sew for when I attach my brooch pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew through the rows and that last bit of the base. And take your time with this bit. I want nice small stitches for this bit. To give us a really good rose shape and also something that's nice and steady nice and sturdy there we go so I'm just working my way around and I'm just sewing that bottom bit of the spiral which was the center of the spiral we originally cut to make a nice flat base for the brooch so if I turn it right ways up you can see got a really nice spirally brooch shape rose shape and you can just play about with the petals open them up a little bit more so the final step to make it wearable is to sew on our safety pin so we're going to go back to the back and you'll notice I haven't taken my thread off yet I've left it on there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this safety pin onto the back and I'm going to open it up first because I want to make sure that I sew this bit, not the pin. Because if I sew the pin on, I won't be able to do the brooch up. So be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to catch yourself on that pin. But what we're going to do is lay the safety pin flat on that base that we've got. So we've got the centre of the spiral that we've laid flat to cover the base of our rows. And I'm going to do some little stitches over and over the top of that safety pin and I'm going to do that at several points along that bit of the safety pin so I've got one near the top I'm going to do another few stitches a little bit further down down towards the bottom there we go and if you get looped over that's fine just unloop it and pull it nice and tight there we go so I'm doing a few stitches at the bottom because we want this to be nice and sturdy so that whoever wears it isn't worried about it coming off and finally I'm going to put a few stitches through the loop of wire at the bottom of the safety pin so we'll do that just to finish off get that nice and secure there we go so you can see on the bottom of the rows I've sewn on my safety pin if we flip it over I've got my nice spirally rose shape 
So I can do that safety pin up, make sure that my thread is nice and secure to so do a couple of little stitches so that it doesn't come undone if I can do it without it unthreading. There we go. And then I can just cut that thread. And there we have our lovely rose brooch ready to wear. So it's just got a safety pin, unhooks through your clothing, and up again, and a beautiful brooch. Have fun, and don't forget to show us how you get on, and we'll see you again soon. As you've seen this week, we had Helen Walsh making a felt rose brooch. Who we have next time? Hmm. And still to come this week, we have... Nick's Football Fanatics Live Social Group on Thursday at 1.30. Nick's, Nick is away, so Jackie and Jamie will be stepping in again to run the show. Also in a few weeks, Football Fanatics will be changing to cover more sports than just football. Also to come this week... On Thursday, we have Dancing to Heal with Wendy, see it... Ethan's Book Club with Jeanette and Susan will be on Thursday too. On Friday, we have Chat Ch Tai Chi with Annette this week doing a summer Kawhi Gong routine. Which brings us to the main event of our Ethan's at Home broadcast. The most popular part of the Ethan's at Home broadcast. I have another brilliant new book to read to you. Now, today's book is. You thought two poops were not enough, so <laughs> third time is the charm. The dinosaur that pooped a princess. Brace yourselves. Once upon a time, Danny was riding his dinosaur steed in search of a princess who longed to be freed. But soon they were lost in fairy tale land, so they asked for directions from Gingerbread Man. Gingerbread Man, oh Gingerbread Man, show us the way we should go if you can. Gingerbread Man scratched his gingerbread head, he thought for a moment, then suddenly said, I cannot remember, my brain's made of dough, but go ask the three little pigs, they might know. Then as they set off down the yellow brick track, Dinosaur ate up that gingerbread sack. Meanie. <laughs> they soon came across the three little pigs rebuild rebuilding their houses of brick, straw and twigs. Three little pigs, oh three little pigs. Princess needs help, do you know where she is? The three little pigs made a little pig huddle, but they couldn't agree they were all in a muddle. She's this way. She's that way. She's down there, they said. Why don't you go ask Prince Charming instead? But while Danny worked out which road should be taken, the pig smelt like bacon. So Dinosaur ate them. Meanie. <laughs> They soon found the prince at the Grand Palace Ball. He made everyone laugh. Charm charmed the pants off them all. Not literally. Prince Charming, oh Prince Charming sir. The princess needs help and we can't find her. He gazed in the mirror that hung on the wall. Then the prince swooshed his hair and announced to them all. The path to the princess's tower is scary. And if you go forth, you'll need some new underwear. -y. He wrote down the way they should go on a scroll before Dinosaur swallowed that charming prince hole. Meanie. <laughs> With Prince Charming's directions, they started their quest past the troll on the bridge and the rotten orc's nest. Tippy toed past the dragon asleep on its gold. Fooled the witch easy peasy, she was all kinds of old. Tamed the wolf in the wood, 
swam the sea of quicksand, climbed the beanstalk, and high-fived the giant's huge hand. But with Danny so focused on saving his maiden, how was he to know that his noble steed ate them? Meanie. <laughs> there it is, there it is, Danny called to his steed. It shan't be long now till the princess is freed. Princess, oh princess, please let down your hair. We've come here to save you, but we can't find the stairs. Danny shouted and called, but there came no reply. So he sat down on the ground, and he started to cry. Just then, an idea pinged in Dinosaur's head. Perhaps they can fly up to the tower instead. With fairy tale creatures deep down in its gut, oh boy, its brain made a wish involving its butt. <laughs> it knew there was only one thing it could do. To save the princess, it needed to uh, brace yourselves. Poo. <laughs> <laughs> like a giant poo fountain, <laughs> they shot up the tower. Giving fairy tale land a smell of belly poop shot. <laughs> it pooped orcs and trolls all over the place. And the prince still looked charming with poop land. <laughs> Sorry. Dino's bum huffed and grunted as he pooped out the pigs, blowing down their new houses and bricks. Whoa. The giant and the wolf, and the sea of quicksand, the dragon, its gold, and the gingerbread man. They flew higher and higher with poop, blood, frost, and the poop was all sparkly like plum pixie dust. <laughs> they crashed through the roof in a mighty poo mess. Then out of the dust came one angry princess. My bedroom, it used to be pretty and blue. And now it's all gooey and dripping with poo. I didn't need saving. My house is the tower. Now I'll put this mess right with my princess girl power. She swished with her wand and she clicked her heels. And then she sang Bibbly Bobbly Poo. Loads of magic appeared from a wand in her hand. And the poop disappeared from fairy tale land. We're sorry, Dan said, for the way we behaved. Now we know not all princesses need to be saved. This story is over, the sun is descending. But wait, there's a twist to this fairy tale ending. Because Dino had nothing better to do, it swallowed the princess and pooped her out too. Meanie. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> well, I guess all I can say is just brace yourselves, there are more. <laughs> we are back again the same time next week with another awesome book to read you. Yay. Have, have a great rest of your week. Stay safe and stay happy. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.